All right, guys, welcome again. The lives are back. And um, today we're going to talk about the transcription, or just the act of transcribing. I, uh, I have returned to this uh, project of doing the lives because I missed it, actually. And today I will just be uh, working on a transcription and answering questions if you guys might have any questions. I'm glad to be back here and uh, let's have some fun. All right, I'm just pulling up here the screen of the live so that I can, uh, I can chat with you guys, see if anybody is, see if anybody is in. I've got two people watching. All right, that's beautiful. All right, guys. So, I have made a transcription of the solo from Donna Lee from Matteo Mancuso, and I'm going to analyze the shit out of that today. First of all, I'd like to say that transcribing is the best thing you could possibly do if you want to get better. If you want to, if you want to do well and um, progress on your plane, the best thing you can do is transcribing solos from the great masters. I have picked up the solo from Matteo Mancuso, which is from Donna Lee, and uh, I'm going to play over it today, and uh, let's see what happens, okay? Let me turn it up a little bit, and we're about to have a good time. Let me show the solo for you guys. I'm going to put a backing track here and see if I can, if I can do it. Two. 
right? And then on the five, he goes. Again, this lick. My check. And then. That's a really good lick for two five. that I did from Donna Lee from Matteo Mancuso his solo on the internet from Donna Lee I am going to post this uh, transcription once I get it perfectly done on, under my fingers um, but uh, I'm explaining what he's played or uh, did you see me play the solo in the beginning? I can play it again if you want so I got this, uh, these fourths over the F sharp, dominant chord, and then he goes back to A, a major, just the arpeggio, that's 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, and then he opens it up, this shape right here, I like the shape, it's an arpeggio with a 9, very modern shape, and then he busts a bunch of, um, bunch of uh, fourths right here going like this. This is supposed to be a wrong note. He's playing a perfect fourth over the major chord. Unless he meant it to be over F because it's the next chord. So he goes. And then you're over B flat. Let me just play the, the, the solo itself. I'm going to play uh, again uh, the Donna Lee backing track, solo and solo and um, melody and solo. Or, all right. Okay, here we go. Here's the solo. I gotta turn this backing track up a little bit. Thank you. 
back into the turnaround. So you got this. One. Dominant. Thing is the sing. Sing, sing. So the, the first coolest phrase that he throws in is when he does a backdoor cadence here going fourth degree, minor, and then dominant back to one. So what he plays here, which really caught my attention, was that over the dominant he played fourth voicings like this. Was a learning experience for me because on this dominant here on the backdoor cadence, I would I would have thought to use a Lydian dominant scale like like this. But he uses a mixolydian scale and plays the fourth. So you got this. And then okay. So that's what you got for here. Let me close this door here. And then he goes on to play this, uh, just a straight up major arpeggio with a ninth. So major arpeggio with a ninth. And then here, I thought this was actually just a, probably he's playing one six two five. So the six is F, F um, the six is F altered. So then over the F altered, he's playing this voicing. He's playing this voicing right here. So this voicing over an F altered, you get flat nine, sharp five, and sharp nine. So he's just dealing with an altered. And then uh, let's see. So he does this, plays the fourth again, kind of weird. And then um, he plays the same uh, voicing that he did here. He throws it over here. This is five one seven five, and then 
Now comes the coolest part of the solo. So again, he's using the fourth over a dominant chord. So that's that one learning, one uh, thing that I learned from transcribing his solo, is that in two instances where you would have used the Lydian dominant scale, he's actually using, he's actually using a mix of Lydian and using the fourth. Now the fourth would not really work if you accent it on a line like this. That's not, not really good. But it uses it works very well if you're doing voices in fourths like so. So the, the fourth in there works pretty well. So then comes the coolest part of the tune, which is a two five one. The coolest phrase. It's still part of the same phrase. The two five one here is B flat minor, E flat dominant, and A flat major. So the phrase that he uses, uh, are, are we still together here? I'm just making sure. All right. So the phrase that he uses here is this. For the 2-5, he plays, actually. So all these notes are in the scale. It's all fourths, right? So if you're in a B flat minor, this is the 11th, tonic, and fifth. And then here, it's still in B flat minor. You got third. 7th and 4th. And then as he goes for the dominant chord, he keeps these voicings, but he puts them into the altered scale, which is a video that I just did yesterday. I uh, harmonized the melodic minor scale and voicings in 4ths. And I took that from this idea. <laughs> and that's why I decided to uh, do this live today about this. It's because I've been working on it. So after he does the minor chord, dominant chord and he plays this so all of these are voicings of the altered scale you can alter here and then the next voicing would have been this this is just the melodic minor scale harmonized in fourths applied over the altered mode which is the seventh mode so you got and then instead of instead of uh, going back here he goes has definitely done his homework as far as understanding the melodic minor scale, understanding the modes such as the altered mode, and having memorized very well the disposition of voicings and fourths from the melodic minor scale. So that's definitely something that you want to spend your time doing because it pays off, it's practical, it's useful. So you got this... Uh, So I'm gonna play the solo up to there. Um, you got uh... and then back to the top. He's quoting the melody, but then he goes to another route, going. So you got this, this is F7 arpeggios, you got 3, 5, 7, 9, and then the second degree dominant again, which shows up in this tune a lot, second degree dominant is B flat dominant, and he goes, same arpeggio he used for F, he goes, that's the same arpeggio. Does it all the way to the from the ninth to the tonic? This is the encapsulation of the tonic. And then go back to the arpeggio. Seven, five, three, one, seven. And now the second phrase I would like to analyze that I think is one of the coolest ones. This is a, a, a old lick. A lot of people know about it. You got the altered chord right here. He's actually making um, playing a wrong note using a wrong scale. I would say because this scale here, C dominant, going to an F minor. There's two possibilities I would say in this. Every time you have a dominant chord going to a minor, you can use two scales. You can either use D flat 9, flat 13, which is your fifth mode of the harmonic minor. It goes like this. Or you can use the altered 
scale, which is... But he used neither of these. He actually used a diminished dominant scale, which is the half whole, half whole, which is like this. So why, why can you not use that? Well, the reason is because this scale gives you a major sixth <coughs> that note right there the major sixth is not as such a good note when you're going towards a minor chord because the major sixth is like the major third of the chord you're going to but you're going to a minor so you want to have a flat six but he just used it which shows which shows that sometimes we can take some liberty in order to achieve freshness you got to break some rules, but rules are meant to be learned before they're broken. So make sure you know what you're doing, unless, uh, unless you're going to, um, well, uh, because if you don't, you're going to be playing, you know, nonsense. So first, learn the, the, the stuff. So the phrase that he does here, it is a diminished dominant phrase over C, he goes... Basically, you're taking this up uh, little molecule right here, and then you're moving a tritone down. That's all the phrase is. And then you take that and, and you move it in minor thirds. Right? But you can apply it here. Then, so I got the phrase minor third down. Minor third down. Minor third down. This is something that you want to spend about five minutes figuring out the fingering, figuring it out, <laughs> figuring out the fingering, so that you can use this phrase, you know, whenever it comes up. Uh, I've seen Joe Pass use it, he actually uses it like this. But it's the same stuff. Um, so he goes. Quote the uh, was that Matchbox? What, what was the name of the tune? Arthur ta, ta online ainda. Uh, got a match, yeah. So he's gonna quote the got a match from Great Chicoria. So uh, because the, the tune goes F minor, C7, F minor. So he does. And now the diminished chord. In the harmony. This is such a good solo to learn because he's very respectful to the harmony, of course, accepting, uh, ac except those two occasions in which he puts perfect fourth over a dominant chord and he uses the uh, dominant uh, diminished over what would have been a Phrygian dominant. But he's very, very much on top of the game there. He's not just shredding nonsense. So that's why. Um, so this scale, 2-1, two, uh, two is good for going to a major chord? Yes, exactly. The whole half step, no, half whole. I don't know what you meant by 2-1, but it's half whole. First you got a half step, and then a whole, and then half, whole. So this scale right here, what it gives you, it's called a diminished dominant. And what it gives you is flat 9, sharp 9, sharp 4, perfect fifth and thirteenth or sixth and yes it is very good to use it to go to a major chord so um, like sometimes I use it just getting any pattern that fits that scale and moving it in minor thirds like this or this sometimes I do that all right uh, uh -huh, I meant the one, yeah. yeah, exactly, half whole, exactly. So going on again, um, finishing this off, so we got okay, now you got one, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, one. And what he does here is uh, on the one, and then six, he's taking this. Uh, the six is dominant with a sharp five. And then the two uses this. Everybody knows this voicing for this chord. 
right? B minor, B flat, B minor, and he goes, and then over the dominant, he goes. So you got ba mi da do da da da. So for the dominant, he goes. That's it. And then once he gets here, that's where the turnaround happens. You got one, six, two, five again. So the one, he does this. It's basically a major seven voicing, the ninth on top. So you got this. And then he just leads the very genius. I'm not sure if he improvised the solo or if he actually wrote the shit down before. Uh, he basically uses this. He goes over the major chord. This voicing is nine, seven, five, three. And then he just voice leads this quite geniusly. To the F7, it is. Uh, so what, what's going on here? Three, flat nine, seven, and five. So it's, it's genius stuff. And then the B flat minor becomes. And then the next. So we've got this. Outside, but you're no longer using the perfect fourth. So it's just the type of thing that you can do, but you just want to be aware of what's going on. So again. So he, this is just a, a line. Okay. So you got this. Um, Towards the third here, the third of F. And then um, going to the dominant, that third becomes the flat seven of the B flat dominant chord. And then now this is a really cool phrase 2 5 1 again. This 2 5 1 is genius, he does this. down to the third of the dominant. Notice that he's encapsulating the flat nine of the dominant here. And he does a beautiful phrase. This phrase is again from the same um, 
dominant, diminished dominant scale, which moves in minor thirds, right, and repeats itself in minor thirds. So you got this. You could use it forever. That's the beauty of it. So he goes. Just a very melodic, very simple little hook that he's using to grab the listener. Uh, any comments? You guys are welcome to make any comments, as well as donations, of course. Uh, I got a, just a second, guys. All right. Okay, so let's continue that. Now I'm, to, um, I'm going to continue, just a second, sorry about that guys, okay, so let me play the solo one more time, just so I don't lose the, the hang of it. Once I get to here, I'm actually on 
nobody in F minor. So again. And then what he does is a very nice arpeggio here. It's two, three, five, seven. Two, three, five, seven. to me the toughest phrase of the, the whole piece. Uh, it's in the ending section of the, the last four or eight bars, last eight bars of the tune. It goes uh, F minor. Just an arpeggio. Interestingly, he figures it like this. I would have thought like this. But he, probably because he started with the finger two here, ended up being easier to reach the pinky up to the fifth of F. It's an F minor. And on the C dominant. Again, very simple bebop line here, just a tonal C, C dominant. I'm going seven, five, three, one, and it resolves to the F minor again. So again, uh, so. yeah, very simple phrase. little lick to do is like this. This is a little sequence that I've seen a lot of players use. You can apply it anywhere. You just take this figure. That's all it is. One, two, three, one. And then you take that same thing, a minor third or a third down. Whether it be a major or a minor third, the scale is going to tell you. But you go. You could keep this going forever. You could go. So you can use it forever. So he used it for a little bit here. It's a known lick. And you are in F minor, so it actually is the third going. And then one, two, three, one. And now he's going to bust the diminished arpeggio because it's the diminished chord. Here, he's going to do a diminished voicing that he did like this. Starting on the flat five of A flat. We are in A flat. A flat diminished. The voicing is like that. So pinky. And then the typical diminished arpeggio right here. You got. That's some comment. Perfectly. Seen that depois de um tempo tocando os solos que nós queremos, passo a tocar eles meio como peça de violão e não aproveito as frases do quanto poderia para mim. Algumas dicas para ser em inglês. Ah, uh, I think you probably you just don't know it, but it is helping you. If you have learned the solo and you have analyzed it, even if you're playing it over and over like a guitar piece, it doesn't matter. As long as you have understood the analysis, like the intervallic analysis, you can be sure that you are absorbing that. And whenever you're going to improvise, some of that is going to come out uh, regardless if you intend or not. So um, I think you don't have to worry about it. All you have to worry about is transcribing, but not transcribing without understanding the harmony. You have to understand the relationship between the notes and the chords, which means the intervals. If you learn a solo and you know the intervals that each note represents, you can be sure that even if you memorize that and you, and, and you keep repeating it, uh, you, are, you are absorbing it and it's going to come out. So that's how I feel about this solo. I, I could probably think that I wouldn't be able to use any of these licks on a, on a, on a solo of my own. But probably some of it would come out, you know? That's what I think. Or you can force yourself, like whenever you're going to take a solo in some tune, you can think ahead of time and look for any passages that you know would fit the harmony of any solo you've learned before. And then you can force yourself, you know, play a little silence before the moment, the key moment. And then whenever the key moment arrives, you throw the phrase that you have set you know, to use. So that, that should work. So here I go, uh, so uh, again, uh, was that, was that, uh, yeah. So that's the diminished guy. Again. It's just straight up diminished 
notes, no mystery. And now comes the big lick, the big guy. It's a killer monster, one, six, two, five. It's actually two, uh, uh, it's actually, uh, what's it? So it goes like this. Itself, which is the fourth of the dominant. But you know what? There's no problem. It's bluesy. Right? So there's no problem. So this is one thing that I've learned from the solo is using the fourth and dominant chords. This is no sin. Yeah, you, you must analyze note by note the interval. You gotta be aware of what the intervals are. Otherwise, it's... it's it, it is of no use. So make sure you analyze note by note. All right, so here is the, the last phrase. You got uh, one, six, five, two, five, one. starting to do this every Friday but it's not going to be always a lesson I'm just basically sharing my practicing with you okay so I'm going to be doing stuff that it is of my own interest but I'm sharing with you guys maybe to inspire you guys or maybe to share some information all right but um, I'm going to do this I'm going to play this solo one more time bear with me here we go
threw it up at the end there. All right, any comments, guys? No comments. Well, well, well. Uh, might as well just practice this ending here. Let's see if that works. One, two, uh, three, four. Jimmy Rosenberg over the dominant, right? 
Oke. Oke. I was just taking this live to uh, do a little bit of practicing before I post it. And uh, I enjoy it, guys. Thank you for being here. Any last questions I'll take. Anybody out there who wants to make a donation, there's still time to do it. So um, thank you, guys. No, no more questions. Arthur, what did you say? Wow, what was the lance? Did you have a specific lead that you liked? guys well my check I appreciate you man I appreciate your donation that means a lot to me uh, so I say thank you and I'll be catching you guys next week all right thank you guys Arthur bom demais tirou muito no seu play ah <laughs> valeu valeu Arthur também também acho você um cara muito talentoso cara grande promessa aí do nosso violão grande abraço Good. <laughs>